Hey guys, it's Erwin Bryan here. Today we're going to take a look at our universal flying lead interface. We get a lot of questions on this. So first we'll start off with the most important wires. So these three wires will get your car running and then you can hook up everything else after that. Most important wire here is going to be our ignition on. That's going to be pin number eight. You're looking at the connector with the wires facing towards you. So it's that position right there. This has to be a 20 amp circuit. It has to be on when your ignition's on and also while the engine is cranking. Next wire we're going to take a look at is our starter signal. This is going to go directly from your key switch while you're cranking to the starter. Pretty easy. This is what's going to make your motor turn over. We've also got our fuel pump wire here. So this is a switched ground output from our harness. This is going to go to a relay. It has to go to a relay. You cannot use this to ground the pump. This is solely made to ground the relay. If you run it to the pump, it will damage the ECU. So those three wires will get you running. Now we can cover some of the other items we get questions on. This is your alternator charge light wire. This is not required in JZ cars and LS universal applications won't have it as well. Now in a Nissan application, this will have to be hooked up to a bulb in your dash. The other side of the bulb will be 12 volt ignition power or you can hook it up to a 470 ohm resistor. Your alternator will not charge without this wire hooked up. Now we can look at some of the other functions. So we've got items like our coolant sensor and our oil pressure. These are gonna be single wire connectors that you'll find out on the engine bay area. And this will allow you to run an aftermarket gauge or potentially your factory gauge. You're gonna run this directly to the sending unit on the motor and then it's going to hook into the back of your gauge from the interface. We can also go over reverse lights. We get a bunch of questions on those. It's pretty simple. There are two wires in the interface. One is going to be ignition power. The other one is go, going to go out to the lamps. Now, if you look, this has two wires as well. This is your reverse lamp switch. So these wires are basically running directly through the harness to this connector. And when you turn your reverse light on, it's going to allow power to travel from this signal over to this one which is going to turn your lamps on. Now other things we can go over speed signal. Nissans have a signal and a ground so it's going to be two wires directly from the sensor into this interface here. The Jay-Z only is going to have one wire so it's going to be that green wire so it'll only be the signal on the Jay-Z. This is going to produce a frequency once the transmission is spinning. You're probably going to need to use a signal conditioner depending on what kind of gauge system you're running. So other items we can go over, air conditioning switch. This is gonna be a ground input. Air conditioning relay is again gonna be a ground output just like the fuel pump and it's gonna to go to a relay that turns your compressor on. So the fan trigger is gonna be very similar to your air conditioning relay and your fuel pump. Also gonna be a switch ground that's going to turn a relay on. So you're not gonna wire it directly to your fan. Bad things will happen for sure. So other items that you won't need, speed signal from the dash, that's gonna be only found in like GTRs and items like that. So that's something you're not gonna worry about using our universal harness. Check engine light is also gonna be a switch ground, much like the fuel pump and fan relay and all the other items. So all of our inputs and outputs are essentially gonna be grounds on here. So hopefully this will help you guys figure out installing this in your vehicle and uh, make it a little bit simpler for you guys.